Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have a very special guest with me and his name is Jpop 80s and he comes all the way from Germany. And he happens to be a huge 80s J-pop fan like myself. And he is very, very much into Chisato Moritaka and all the other J-pop idols from the past. So we are going to have a little bit of a chat and I'm going to ask him questions and it's going to be really fun. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. So let's invite J-pop 80s to come along to our chat. All right, so nice to meet you. I'm Jess. Nice to meet you as well. And I'm, I'm Jan. You're Jan? Oh. Yeah. And, and you're from Germany, correct? Exactly. Oh, I'm from New York City. And right now mm. it's, it's super, super uh, gloomy and dark. So as you can see in the webcam, it's, it's super freaking yeah. dark outside. So like anyway. over here? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So over here, weather has been really varying recently. For example, it's raining the other day, like the entire other day, and then one day it's really sunny again. So I'm having my lights on right now, so everything's bright in my room, but outside it's really dark, yeah. Yeah, like right now it's raining. It's it's uh, it's typical autumn weather weather because it's fall now. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, we're going to talk about Chisato, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, I'm just going to leave the floor to you, going to leave all the questions to you. I want you to uh, just introduce yourself and, uh, you know. Okay, so shall I start with how I basically found out about her? Yes. Uh, so basically, um, I have my, I don't think if it's, I don't think it's in frame, but over there I have like my huge collection of like albums and stuff. And basically before I found out about Chisato, I was listening to Miki Matsubara, Tatsuri Yamashita and many more and one day I just got Chisato and my recommended and then I found one of her PVs Distress to be exact and I just found that video amazing and then I went down the rabbit hole basically and nice. then I listened yeah then I listened to New Season and all her other albums and I immediately fell in love with her type of music That that's good um, yeah so uh, what are your favorite singles and albums like my favorite album by far is her debut, her new season, because it's like so different from all the other albums. Like she's going for that very, very, very soft tone in there. And like every album of hers varies. For example, Rock Alive is very different. And my favorite single, I think, is Overheat Night by far. Yeah. Overheat and, Night? Yeah, I, I love yeah. that music video. Yeah. And I actually have the album here. I don't know if you can see oh, it. That's so nice. Yeah. yeah. Mine's still mine's still getting shipped. Yours is getting shipped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have it on C D. And uh I really like um that she uh I don't think she composed her own music yet on this album, but she did play the keyboards. She, she did play the piano, right? Yeah, exactly. One. Yeah. And uh, I really like most of her songs, like Goodbye Season, Miss Lady. Um, ways so it, it was really a really nice album yeah and like in her first live performance she like seems so professional you almost think that it's not her first live performance like where she sings all the songs from new season and like goodbye season and then it's so nice yeah I have her her laser disc and uh, I I'm in love with that concert because uh, it's just uh, I know I don't know why, but I get a little bit teary eyed at it because it's her debut, and I don't know, it's yeah. so nostalgic of that time. I also have like her third live performance of um, Kurikiri Bye Bye Bye, and like more. If you want, I can get that over here right now. The laser disc with the OB. Okay. Basically, this is her debut, like not her debut, but like her third live video. It, like, has, let me read. Yeah, it has. Kurikiri, Bye Bye Bye, and like six other songs, yeah. And Get Smile as well, such a nice one. Oh, like, I, I love Get Smile, I love the, the single one. Yeah. And I'm trying to get the single, but they don't have it, like it's super, super rare, the, the single. Yeah, I know, the like finding one. all their stuff is, yeah, like getting all their stuff is so difficult because basically she's one of those icons that like made music in the time where like vinyl went to 
normal discs, like to normal CD. That's why it's so hard to find all her stuff on vinyl. Yeah, I believe that when she was in, in 1988, when she did the Miha, they had these CDVs. I'm not sure if you know yeah, those things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was like a CD and a music video inside. I'm not sure how yeah. that how that works because I I've seen it all the time on auctions on eBay. I'm like, what is that CDV CDV? Like basically, it's like laser disc, uh -huh. but like in a worse quality, pretty much, and compatible for PC and like CD players. Yeah. Yeah, because I know a lot of people online, like usually like laser disc collection collectors, they always say that laser disc is superior to Blu-ray. Or to any uh, other type of modern technology. I don't know why they say that. Well, it's um, superior to um, CD and nothing else, pretty much. It's more superior to Blu-ray or to DVD, because I guess the disc size is really huge, especially with laser disc players. You have these um, really huge discs, yeah. That's and they have like they're double-sided. That's why they have such good quality. You have all this space open. But like DVDs, Blu-rays are far better compressed. That's why they're so small and also of good quality. Yeah. Yeah, the Get Smile concert that I have here. I don't know if you. I have it here on the table. This Get Smile uh, laser disc. I got it at a really cheap price on on eBay. I got it from a seller from Virginia, and I was like, how the heck did they have this? And uh, yeah. and the weird thing is that I do not have a laser disc player, because the prices on eBay are super super exaggerated. Yeah. Like they're asking for so much money, and it the laser disc player is more expensive than the laser disc itself. So I'm like, what the heck? So I can't find a single one that that actually works. I can't. Yeah, it's even, true because yeah. yeah. Even on my flea it's markets, like, yeah, you can't find them. Yeah, exactly. Like in Japan, Laserdisc players went really huge, but in Europe and America, they didn't. And they were very, very expensive at the time. And I guess they're still very expensive just for that reason, because they didn't sell out. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I, I, in my flea markets, because I have a local flea market that comes um, every year, and they did have Laserdisc players, but they were all busted and broken. And I'm like, I'm not buying yeah. that. So that's the only laser disc player that I, the laser disc that I own, but I do not have a laser disc player, so it sucks. But I do have that same concert on DVD. I do have it on DVD. Yeah, I don't have the DVD or the CD for it. Like I could only find the laser disc of it, so I'm pretty empty on that one. Yeah. And I got uh, the DVDs from a seller in Taiwan. They gave me like a huge. I I think you saw it in my video. My. On my Tisato video, Wait, where is it? it? Has to be here, somewhere in this pile. The seller gave me like this much, you know, this pile of yeah. uh, of DVDs from her concerts. I think I have Get Smile in here. Oh yeah, I found it. This is Get Smile. It's that's on, so nice. It's on yeah. DVD. DVD. That's so cool. Yeah. And I was like, seller, are you crazy? You are going to sell me all of this for less than $20? It's like, that's a bargain. And they're from yeah, Taiwan. Really a bargain. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to find on eBay. You know, you yeah. have to keep your eyes wide open and you'll find something. Cause... Exactly. Like, yeah. for me, collecting started with Peachberry from a German seller. Like, I don't know how he got that one. But, yeah, that one started it for me. And... Right now, I'm just trying to collect all their albums, and sometimes it's really hard to find them. Yeah. Yeah, especially the early ones. They're really hard yeah. to find. Um, so, uh, my next question for you is, what are your favorite uh, costumes of hers or outfits that she wears? Oh, that's a really odd question, because she wore so many. <laughs> like, I think I really like the one from The Stress, and I like her, like clothing from the Mita concert, like my, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but yeah, she, in the Mita concert, she basically wore very many different costumes and I like all of them. So the one from the stress and from the concert pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I really like the one that she uses on, in the meet, in the same Mita concert where she 
um, has the waitress outfit. It's like a green outfit. Yeah. But she sings her yeah. a knife. I really like that one. And I also like the one, the one that she wears at the end of the uh, the third live video concert, uh, where she performs Juna Nasai. You know, the silver yeah. dress. I really like that. Yeah, so she had, nice. She had so many, so many amazing, you know, fashions. And I'm... Yeah. And, uh, she reminds me of Selena. You know Selena? From uh, no. the, the Mexican no, singer? No. I'll have to I'll have to check that out. I've never yeah, heard you have to her. check her out. She's like a legend here in in the U.S. because uh, mm. she, she's like of Mexican descent. She's like Hispanic, but she sang a lot of amazing songs. And she was killed. I, you should you should do research on that. Yeah, I'll, it's, it's, I'll check that out. Because she's like a sure. freaking legend here in America, and you know, especially in Texas where she's from. And she reminds me a lot of Chisato, like the bangs of of that time period, the the clothes, the fashion, everything. Mm -hmm. So Chisato is sort yeah. of like her, like but in Asian form. <laughs> I uh, guess so. Yeah, and um, uh, why do you like Chisato? Why is she your I favorite think it's because idol? Of, it's because of her very unique style. Like she takes everything to a different approach, especially with her movies. She she also had that movie career. She had the model career. Well, the model career is pretty um normal with idols, like many idol stories start with a beauty contest. But yeah, it's just her approach to music, her dancing, everything. Like she's so unique in my opinion. Yeah, because if you think of the of the um, the eighties in Japan, it was a very beautiful time period when the economy was was really good. There was a lot of money. You notice that all the stage you know, the stage performances, they have like these beautiful um, sets, these props, right? And yeah. uh, and you know and I can I can name so many J-pop idols like uh, Wink you know Wink right Yeah I love Wink Wink uh, Miho Nakayama uh, Minako Tanaka uh, who else uh, uh, what's Hikaru Nishida like there's just so many and even um, Yu Yasaka I love Yu Yasaka I love yeah. her she was on this show called Sukuban Deka you have to check it out have you ever seen the movie Yeah I, I already watched I like watched it um this week on yeah on Tuesday and I absolutely loved that movie. Yeah. It was so nice to watch. Yeah, it was so it was so so nice and also um, uh, what's her name again? The 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 main uh, actress from Sukuban Deka. Her name is uh, uh, Yuma Nakamura. Yeah, yeah, Yuma Nakamura, and uh, oh my God, I forgot her name. The 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 main one, Yoko Minami Mino, right? Yeah, the movie features so many idols. Like it's so nice to watch. Yeah, and you may have uh, known uh, another idol group that was really big in Japan called Onyanko Club. Onyanko Club. I think, yeah, I think I've heard of it once. Yeah, many uh, famous J-pop singers were in that group before they became like solo artists. So I highly recommend you check Onyanko Club because I love most of their songs, especially there's this really uh, controversial song called um, Serafuku. Um, it, it, it means like in, in English, uh, don't take off my sailor uniform. So, you, so yeah, it's like a, it's like a sexual song. Yeah, but you, you yeah. have to check it out what the what the lyrics say. But uh, yeah. that's their most popular song. But I really like their other songs, especially from their first album, Kick Off from 1985. So I really like their music. Like their music is like sort of like, you know, it's 80s, but it has, it's kind of alluding to the 1950s. So, because I, I noticed that many, like, mm. 80s music in, in Japan, it's alluding a lot to the 1950s. Like, they're inspired by that time, right? Like, I don't know if you noticed yeah. that, right? It's very, very vintage. I, I did notice it, yeah. It's like trying to, like, play off the, the old vibes, basically. Mm -hmm. And, I yeah, so I think I have another very, very, very precious idol to me. Like, I really love Yuma Nakamura. Like she's oh. she makes such nice music or has made such nice music as well. Yeah, you might not like that's why. Yeah, yeah, that's why I uploaded Emblem, her first album. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like. Uh, I really like uh, Yuma Nakamura because she was part of the Sukuban Deka Club. I think she, yeah. she was in, in 1987. Yeah, 1987. Right, she was part yeah, of exactly. Sukuban Deka. And uh, uh, what else was I going to say about her? Oh, I really like uh, her single. I don't know what her her main single is. Uh, it's called uh, I don't know. It's a 
music video yeah. where she where she's dancing with like a jean jacket. I'm I'm not sure what song that mm. is. I'll, I'll uh, you have to you know what it is, right? Yeah. That, that well, I don't know video. the name. Sometimes yeah. sometimes you you know what it is, but you don't know the name. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just so many so many idols. I also like um. You have to check out Minako Tanaka. She kind of looks a lot like Chisato. Yeah, I'll check ex that out. Except she's a. Uh, I think one of one of one of her singles was uh, "Be My Baby," which is like a cover version of the Ronettes, like you know the Ronettes, that '60s group. Yeah. I'm sorry if you hear sirens outside. It's like my 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 street's noisy as hell. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah. So uh, I also like this song called "Namida no Tayo," which means like "Empire of the Sun," so something like that, so, something related to the sun. I really like that yeah. song, and uh, also "Namida no Try," which means uh, "Try, Try." And you, you should see like the, the, her live performances yeah. of that song because I, I really like it. And also Yuka Onishi, who's also in Sukuban Deka as well, with Yuma Nakamura and, and Yuya Sakari. Right? They were the three of them were yeah, together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I also like her stuff too, but not as much as Yuma Nakamura and Yuya Saka. And yeah. Yuya Saka, of course, I I absolutely adore her. I love her outfits too, and uh, I also like her early stuff from uh, 1986, Crystal Eyes, right? That was her first album, yeah, Crystal yeah. Eyes. And uh, I also like uh, Candid Girl, her, that album too. And the song Sea Girl, I like that album. Yeah. I like most of her stuff, uh, but not none of them uh, toppled Chisato, I think. I think Chisato was my, my very first yeah. uh, idol, you know? Like, I think Shisato is in like a leech of her own, so to say. And my really first idol was Miki Matsubara. I also got her first album on vinyl. Like, she has a very jazzy vibe. It's so nice to listen to her as well. That's cool. Because I, I never yeah. heard of this Miki Matsubara. I never heard of yeah. her. Uh, what, what songs do you recommend from her? Um, Stay With Me. Uh, that was like her big hit song. And like, right now I don't have any other songs on the top of my head of hers. Like, I haven't listened to her in such a long while, just because of Chisato. But yeah, you should definitely check her out. She makes amazing music too. Nice. Uh, do you have, do you know any like trivia from Chisato? Like anything that you've discovered that's interesting about her? Yeah. Like, many people don't know the name of her backup band like the people playing the bass and stuff in the background they're actually called the Janet Jacksons I'm not even kidding wow and <laughs> I, I yeah. know I know because uh, she actually I don't know it was an article that was posted a long time ago when like I think 10 years ago it was posted and they said that Chisato liked to model herself after Janet Jackson in her especially yeah. her Mite album yeah and like she also, like, even if she's in her leisure of her own, even if she's famous, she still had a band she looked up to, and that was Pink Lady, the duo. Like, she has so much, like, merchandise of those two, yeah. I'm not really a fan of, of Pink Lady. I do know that she sat there performed a medley, like, in her, her live performances, like, that are posted on YouTube. She performed a medley yeah. of the song UFO and Southpaw, all those songs, right? But I like the way she yeah. sat those things in. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. A, I'm not a huge fan of '70s J-pop, though. Not, not, not a huge. Yeah, fan. me neither. I always prefer the '80s or '90s. Yeah, the '80s and the '90s were really the golden age of city pop, so to say, until the late '90s, where it really died off because the whole economy, the economy bubble burst and all that. People yeah. just had less money for nice music and stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you like modern J-pop, or you prefer the old school stuff? I like modern J-pop too, but like old school J-pop is always going to stay my favorite. There's no disputing that whatsoever. Uh, I am a huge fan of, of the retro stuff that will always be within me. But yeah. uh, I do like some modern J-pop, especially from like like the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. I like like uh, Utara Hikaru. Of course, everybody knows who Utara Hikaru is. And she sang the songs for Kingdom Hearts. Have you ever played that game? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've never played Kingdom Hearts because I've never 
ever touched a console in my entire life except the Wii, and I'm not even joking. Like, I'm trying to get that whole console thing going for me with like emulators and stuff, like experiencing all the experiencing old games. But right now, I have never pl ever played Kingdom Hearts. Wow! But I really wanted to. Yeah, yeah you should play I, it. I I definitely uh, recommend that you play the game because I've been playing ever since I was ten. Like, ever since I was yeah. a kid, I was playing that game. And uh, I have the walkthrough for Kingdom Hearts 3 on my channel, so you can check that out, too. Yeah, <laughs> it's really, I'll watch it. Yeah, I curse sometimes because, you know, uh, I love playing my video games. I love winning all the, all the time. Yeah. Uh, but I do like with that Hikaru stuff. Uh, most of her stuff is amazing, uh, especially from the early 2000s. Uh, I can't think of another modern J-pop artist that I like. Uh, you should check this group called Yellow Generation. They're from the early 2000s, but they disbanded like in 2003-ish. So they were like short-lived. But you should check their yeah, stuff I'll out, especially out. that yeah. song Carpe Diem. Like the, the music video for that for that uh, song is beautiful. Um, but I don't know any other modern J-pop uh, artists uh, that I like. Uh, I don't know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of like 80s, 90s, early 2000s, and that's it. <laughs> that's, that's what I listen to. I don't even listen to yeah. the radio. I don't listen to the mainstream at all. Yeah, because, like, in my opinion, mainstream music is just way too easy. Like, you have all these modern pop songs, and they're just way too easy to understand and to, like, get into the vibe of it. It's, like, not very cool, in my opinion, yeah. So I feel like in our parents' generation, they had, they sort of were forced to listen to the radio, and whatever was on the radio, they, they listened to. But in our yeah. generation, it's sort of like people are, because of the internet primarily, that everybody yeah. is separating themselves into certain groups. Like certain people like, you know, rock. Uh, certain people like, you know, like you and me, we like city pop, right? Yeah. And certain people like house music. And, and everybody is, is, uh, is going into their own little niches and they're not listening to the mainstream anymore. Like I ask a lot yeah. of people who are into the same stuff as me and they're like, it's true, you know, our parents' generation, um, they, they were forced to listen to, to the music there. And the music there was, was great. Even, like, 30 years ago, you could listen to, uh, I don't know, any, any 80 song there, and, and it was amazing. But nowadays, yeah. it's like, what is this? It's mostly, it's garbage. <laughs> it's garbage. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So. Okay. Like you, yeah. Yeah. So you have all these rappers and pretty much all the songs have the same structures, like drugs, money, and so on. It's like so monotone in my opinion. Like I can't even stand it anymore. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I do like uh, rap music, especially old school hip hop. Yeah. Because it was kind of born. It, it was gonna. It came out of New York City. Because if, if you if you uh, look at all the old school hip hop artists, like the Fat Boys, uh, you know, Young MC, like all those all those great great people back then, you know, their lyrics actually made sense because they were from uh, the borough here from the Bronx or from Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And uh, those songs made sense, you know, even Salt and Pepper who are from my my borough, Queens. So it just goes to show you that they were very talented, you know, because their their lyrics actually made made sense. But nowadays it's like, what what is this? <laughs> well, what <Yeah>. is this? <laughs> even, even my own parents don't like to listen to the radio. Because I, I pretty much grew up on their, their kind of music. Yeah. And uh, do you speak Japanese yourself? No, but I'm currently in the learning. Like, I'm trying my best to, like, learn all the three alphabets, get everything started. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I don't know Japanese. I'm kind of like those people that, that sort of, like, like learns phonetically like i can sing yeah. these japanese songs but i have no idea what they're saying <laughs> yeah i have no idea what they're saying uh, i do know sure. some of the lyrics because i translate them like on google translate or i just look up uh, their lyrics online but i really have no idea what they're saying but i can pronounce it which is really weird and even yeah. before I discovered Chisato, like even before, like when I was in, in like in elementary school and in middle school, I learned all of the songs um, from Sailor Moon, like the, the Sailor Moon songs from 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 the from the anime, right? From the 90s. Yeah. I learned all of those songs by myself, like 
and people are like, what the heck? Like, how are, why, how can you sing these songs and not know what they're saying? <laughs> You're weird, right? <laughs> yeah. Like over here, like back in 2014, 2013, we had like a TV station called Viva, mm -hmm. and sometimes they would like stream old school 80s, 90s animes like Sailor Moon, and I, I think I've watched like five episodes of Sailor Moon in total back then. But yeah, I really love the anime, and I definitely want to watch that again. Yeah. Yeah. So there was this website called I don't know if it's still there. It's called Sailor Moon Music .net. And I would download all the songs and listen to them like that on my little iPod because iPods were popular like years ago. And I would just sing all of the, the lyrics to the songs. And people were looking at me weird like, what the hell is this girl like? Why? She doesn't like speak Japanese. She's not even Japanese. And she's like singing the lyrics to these songs. Weirdo. <laughs> but that that was me back then, you know, and that was before I discovered Chisato. I discovered yeah. Chisato in middle school when, when YouTube was popular, when I first opened up my own YouTube account. And I named my YouTube account after a famous 80s, uh, 80s pop artist. You may have, I don't know if you know him, his name is Howard Jones. No, Howard, Howard, doesn't say anything, no. sadly. He was very popular in the 80s. He's from, he's from England, so he's Welsh, but, but he has... He has done a lot of uh, really good stuff, so you should definitely listen to him, Howard yeah, Jones. So that, yeah, so I named him after after that. I named my channel after Howard Jones, and I would post like AMVs about Sailor Moon and all that stuff. And that was pretty much my channel years ago, like ten years ago. But now my channel is yeah. different now because I've I've matured like, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like the thing about music is. If you can't if you can't understand the song but still like it, I think that shows that like music is a very very variable topic, a very variable topic where you can love anything if you just have the passion to do so. That's true. Like you don't even yeah you don't even have to understand it to love it. No, you, you can just love anything and and yeah. you know a lot of people are you know around my area are super super you know ignorant because they assume that because like you know I'm Hispanic you know. And I don't, yeah. I don't, like, I like some Hispanic music, some Latin music, but not all of it. Like, that's very, very few. Like, I grew up listening to a lot of 80s music, a lot of, like, new wave music, a lot of rock music, a lot of punk music. Um, and I listen to, like, Russian music and Japanese music and Chinese music and French music. Like, I love pretty much any music coming out of the 80s and 90s that's of any, any language I like. You know, and I just don't yeah. listen to my stuff. And people around my area are like, that's just super, you know, strange. Like, you know, and they look at me weird. Like, I don't know. Everybody has different tastes. You know, every, yeah. like, music is, is subjective, you know. and Exactly. Yeah. Like, for example, over here, the same phenomenon is going on with me. Like, many of my peers don't even know anything about the music I like for some reason. Like, they rather listen to German music or, like, pop music, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the same thing. And here, it's mostly, like, rap music and mostly, uh, you know, what whatever's popular. Like, uh, like Latin music, like reggaeton, which I don't, I hate, I despise, I'm sorry. Like, I know that <laughs> my, I, I'm of that, of Latin descent, but that doesn't mean yeah. that I like that type of music, so. That's yeah. just not me. <laughs> And that's why I disappoint a lot of people because they think that I'm into that stuff and I'm not, you know. Um, mm. Do you know any great sites to purchase J-pop music? Like I think Discogs, like D A D Y S C O G S dot com, like Discogs dot com is a very great site to find stuff. But like stuff on there is very expensive because it's getting like first it has to be discovered there, then it has to like go through all the customs and stuff like but this cox is very great or you could go for like japanese proxy sites like baiyi very easy to find just type that in, in the search bar and you have a proxy site like for example if you want to buy something straight from japan like without anybody else getting involved you use baiyi and basically what they do is you give them money they buy the stuff you want and then it gets shipped to their to their warehouse and then it gets shipped to then it gets shipped to Okay, so then it gets shipped. Yeah, I know my, my English is very rusty right now because I haven't spoken English in a very long time. So then it gets shipped from their where, from, from their warehouse to your place. 
So proxy sites are a very great opportunity to get anything cheaply, yeah. Well, I didn't even know that they had to go through that process just to ship it to your country. That's amazing. Because I, I yeah. you know, I usually buy my records on eBay. And I've used Discogs a couple of times, but I don't really trust them because I bought a a record from them from Blue Angel, which was, you know, Cindy Lauper? That was Cindy Lauper's mm. first band before she became a solo artist. So I bought that record and it was supposed to be the original record from 1980 and it was supposed to come with the sleeve. But when I bought yeah. it, they only gave me the record. And I was like, what that the sucks. heck? Yeah, I was like, where's the sleeve? Where's the, you know, the original, uh, you know, lyric sheet? Like, they didn't give it to me. And I'm like, I'm not buying this yeah. cards ever again. <laughs> so I had a bad experience uh, on there. But uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's nice that you're recommending me all these places to get the, the authentic Japanese stuff because I've been trying to get um, stuff from like Ayumi Nakamura, which is my new favorite yeah. J-pop idol. But I don't think she's pop. I think she's more like rock. So I've been trying to find stuff from her. So I might use your, your recommendations to find stuff from her. So I'm, I'm very interested yeah. in that. Um, I think I ran out of other questions. So, or okay, number ten, the last one. Um, any other J-pop artists that you recommend? Let me think. Mm, so, this is a this is an artist that everybody knows, but I think Maria Takeshi Takeshi is very nice as well. And like Tatsuri Yamashita, her husband, pretty much, and Miki Matsubara, mm. and then. I think also you have to try out like Japanese fusion fusion jazz. That's great as well. Like that's a completely different genre from city pop, but it's so nice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll look into that. Um, do you know any like J rock artists? Apart from Rebecca. Yeah. From the top of my head, no, not at all. But I'll have to look into J rock as well since I really like that genre. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um, I highly recommend RC Succession and uh, Princess Princess, who did work with Shisato on on one song, actually two songs. I think it was Teriyaki Burger and another one oh, called, yeah. called Growing Up, something like that. Or yeah. M, I, I don't know what the name of the song was, but they did work with her. I like Princess Princess. They've been working ever since, they've been active since 19... 86 to I think 1996 that's when they disbanded but they're a really good uh, girl rock band so I highly recommend you check them out as well as Ayumi Nakamura and uh, Sheena and the Rockets I really like them there's a yeah. lot of amazing uh, J-rock artists as well I man I wish I could live in the 80s and the 90s you know compared yeah. to now nowadays it's like so you know so depressing yeah nowadays. yeah like Modern music is very limited. Yeah, it's super like depressive. You, yeah. yeah. You have all those songs that just sound the same, just differently mixed, and like you said, it's just depressing. Yeah. It's, so it's, thanks to the... Yeah, yeah it's, it's, so it's, thanks... Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, because of the internet, we now have all these great options to like find out about Japanese music, any type of music, really. And thanks to the internet, I discovered city pop. Yeah. Uh, do you? I highly recommend that you. Uh, do you download music? Yeah, or, sometimes. Or, but or, or you prefer buying the albums? I do both. Like for example, with Chisato, sometimes I just don't have the option to buy it physically, so I have to download it. But normally, I buy them physically. Yeah. I highly recommend that you download this program called SoulSeek. SoulSeek. That's where I get most of my uh, super rare uh, stuff that I can't get on on physical copy. I, I download it on SoulSeek, and they have some pretty good stuff there. The, the, the con of going on SoulSeek is that you have to make sure that you share stuff. Because if you don't yeah. share certain stuff, they're going to ban you, and you know they're not going to give you their downloads. And, you know how people are, so just make yeah. sure that you have like a share, like you share some stuff with them, and it's a pretty great site to you know get certain uh, J J uh, pop artists or J rock artists that you cannot get their CDs or you can't get their music from, so you can just download it there, and they have some pretty yeah. good stuff there. 
sometimes uh, sometimes they have good stuff, sometimes not not so much. You won't find anything. And uh, that's where I found a, um, a Saka, Yuya Saka stuff. I found it on, on Soulseek. Yeah. So it's like a P2P software uh, program. Yeah. Like uh -huh. when I ever download like music or something, I use Torrent. I'm pretty sure you've heard of Torrent, yeah? Yeah, Torrent. <laughs> torrent. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's P2P as well. No, no, sometimes it's P2P, like certain um, uploaders require you to pay money, but yeah, it's so nice. Yeah, I don't recommend you choose, um, you download Addis. Addis, that's what it's called. It's one of the worst <laughs> softwares ever because all you're going to find there is just porn. <laughs> it's <not> horrible. <laughs> yeah, like also i've tried using spotify but spotify in germany or i think like most other countries doesn't offer the wide variety <laughs> of like city pop and stuff so yeah yeah and Sorry. that <laughs> and that that program completely gave my it gave my my father's computer viruses and it gave my computer viruses and it was just horrible so we had to delete that and we had to like reboot the entire computer it was yeah. So don't download artists. It's just horrible. Soulseek is better. All right. So uh, I'm out of questions. So I'll leave the floor to you. Uh, yeah. You can ask so me questions. I only, have, yeah, I only have a few questions, but I'll try to think of some while while you answer them. Okay. So my first, yeah. So my first question is like, if Chisato didn't exist, who would be your most favorite J-pop idol? <sighs> That's uh, that's really tough because I like so many of them that, I, that I've mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, next to Chisato, probably, probably my, it would be, um, hmm. probably it would be um, probably Miho Nakayama, Miho Nakayama. Mm. I I yeah. uh, I love her because of uh, she was in this TV show called Bebop High School. Have you ever heard of that? From 1985? Yeah, you have to see that TV show. And it was yeah, and, and they it. also made a movie too. And I'm trying to get the my hands on the movie, but I I can't find anywhere not online, not on not on, you know, on eBay. So I really want to see that movie. As I saw the trailer, somebody posted the trailer and I and I oh, I love the I just love that song Bebop High School. It, it's kind yeah, of like it's kind of has like kind of like a western kind of uh, twang to it, but I, re I really like uh, Bebop High School, and I pretty much love all of her albums that Miho Nakayama has, like C, C, uh, that's the name of her single, and then the album as well from 1985, and it's very very like it reminds me a lot of Madonna, like she kind of like a lot of J-pop artists in in 1985 they they really copied Madonna because Madonna was yeah. big at that time, and I highly recommend you watch the video for C. That's a very good song, as well as uh, the last song on the album, number 10, is, uh, uh, it's called Ame, Ame, something about rain. That, that's a, really, yeah, good, rain, that's, exactly. that's a rain. really good song. And uh, and also on her other, her second album, After School. You have to check that album out. It's very, most of the songs I, I love. Um, and also, uh, later on, when she matured, around 1988 when she did the uh her other album i don't know what it's called it's called cat catch me catch me that's a really good album and um it sort of has like latin freestyle um kind of vibe do you know that genre latin freestyle no never heard of it you have to check it out because it's it's uh it's a mixture of 80s like new wave and synth pop mixed with like latin beats so it was a really um popular genre that that originated here in, in in New York City as well as in other other cities like uh, Tex like Houston, uh, Miami, uh, San Francisco, Chicago, and and uh, and it's it's the music that my parents grew up with because they they're of Latin descent. So it's a very beautiful genre, and I highly recommend that you um, you research into it. Most of the songs I I love, and I like how Miho Nakayama. Uh, use Latin freestyle in uh, in the in her song Catch Me because it's a really good uh, uh, genre and unfortunately they uh, they no longer make music from uh, from freestyle they don't, freestyle is kind of like dead 
it died out. It started in 1983 here in New York City, yeah. and it died out probably in the late 90s. Late 90s. Nobody listens to freestyle anymore, and it's usually and the people that usually listen to freestyle are people who were teenagers in the 80s or really, really old people, and uh, and believe it or not, they still have uh, they still they still like this music. Believe it or not, it's very legendary here in New York City, and yeah. they and they still have concerts and they invite the old artists from the old freestyle artists and they come here and they and 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 their tickets are mostly sold out can you believe it the concert is still sold out because people still like love that music yeah and uh, it's uh, highly recommend you 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 uh listen to land freestyle because it originated here in new york city and uh so going back to miho nakayama uh, i really like most of her stuff and uh Apart, uh, if Chisato were, were not to exist, I think Miho Nakayama would be my number one idol. Oh, and she, right, and that's she, good. Uh, and she also made this uh, game, I think it's on the Nintendo, something like that. It was like a dating game from 1987. I don't know if <laughs> I can play that game on the emulator, but it's a very, very old game. It was like a dating game. Yeah, and, I have another fun fact. Did you know that Chisato also had her own game on PlayStation 1? Yeah, I've seen it on on auction on eBay, and I was like, yeah. "Should I buy it? Like should I not buy it?" Yeah, it's so weird to see it because I've never seen it before. She also had like a lot of software for like Windows ninety eight and lower, also very cool. But never checked it out. Yeah, nice. Uh, but I've seen it on on auction a lot on eBay, and and I've never 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 bought it. So I'm curious about what what that game is about because I've never played it before. Yeah. Let me think of another question really quickly. Wait. Yeah, so what's your most favorite, like, live performance or live song, basically, of ours, of Chisato? Yeah. It's a lot. But the <laughs> number one song, I'd say, probably is uh, either it's Get Smile. I love her performances, especially from, from her first concert. I love Get Smile from that concert, as well as in the third live video where she uh, actually performed with her own instruments. And also later on yeah. in the 90s, she performed Get Smile in those medleys. Like she would perform New Season and then Overheat Night and then Get Smile. So she would perform it like in medleys. And and I, I really like that song. And uh, what other song do I like from her? Probably, probably Miha. Miha is really cute. I love- Yeah, the, I really like it. I love yeah, the music I video. It reminds yeah, me of- I really yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry okay. for keeping clean. So I really like Miha as well. I like the whole laser disc. Like Mita basically also had a laser disc version with Miha alone and another song on it. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of uh, Tom Tom Club's Genius of Love. Have you ever seen that song? Nope. Or the music Never. video. Check out the music video and you'll see you will see the resemblance with, with Miha with the music video. And I also like Alone. Alone is a very nice song. I also like yeah. the music video. It's very, uh, I think it's kind of depressing. I don't know. I just get I get depressed from that song. Kind of get sad. I don't know why. Because it's about a breakup yeah. or a divorce or something like that. Because she has like a ring at the end of the, of the song. Yeah. And uh, what other song do I like from her? Jun Anasai. That was the number one song. That led me to Chisato, and that was the first music video that I ever clicked on YouTube. When YouTube first came out back in 2005, I was in middle school, and uh, I was bored, and I, I just looked up this video that had lots of colors, and it was from 1989. And uh, that, was, that was the video that led me to Chisato. I started researching more about her, and I, and I started uh, buying all of her albums, and I was, I was a really weird kid, you know, 10 years <laughs> ago. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your most expensive item in your entire collection of her albums and stuff? Probably this uh, DVD uh, from Moritaka Land, the Moritaka Land tour from 1990. I have it here. Oh yeah, it's the remaster. Yeah, this it's is very expensive. Yeah, it's the most expensive one, and I bought it from a seller in America. They had it for, cool. for half the price because on uh, Amazon Japan it was about it was about eighty dollars because they were selling it with a calendar or something like that and I was like I'm not gonna yeah. pay that much and it was a Christmas present for myself so uh, the seller was sell selling it for about fifty dollars 
So it was like half. And I bought it, and uh, it's pretty good. It's the most expensive one, but it's, it's, it was worth it. It was worth it no. because I, because most of her concerts are, are, are really hard to find, you know? And uh, I think this one was unreleased or something like that. Uh, I don't know what Warner Japan is doing nowadays, that they're uh, releasing some of her unreleased concerts. There's another one called, I think, the Moritaka, the Moritaka Tour or something like that. They released it like three years ago. There's another one. Yeah, it's probably because of her anniversary with the 30-year Chisato Moritaka anniversary thing. Like, also, there was a reprint, a reprint of the album The Moritaka, but on vinyl. Like, it's so weird. First, I thought it was a bootleg or something, but it's actually a genuine reprint that has never been done before. Like, The Moritaka was never ever on vinyl. I found that so weird. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I never, I never heard of that because that's the only album that I do not have on CD. I do not have the Moritaka, and uh, that sucks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to buy it. But I never heard of the vinyl, vinyl edition because yeah. most of her, like, most of her albums from the '90s cannot be found on vinyl because they moved it to CD, right? Yeah. Her earlier albums are whole... on vinyl. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think the last album that was on vinyl by her was really Miha, the album version of it. And after that, it was just CD and cassette tape because cassette tape was still very popular at the time. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I ha used to have a lot of cassettes back then in, in the old days, like when I was a kid, but my parents like sold it or they threw it away. I only yeah. have one cassette tape and that's from the artist Regina and the album is Curiosity. That's the only one that I have. Uh, yeah. but, but cassette tapes were pretty big back then. And uh, people still listen to them, believe it or not. Yeah, like cassettes are getting re revived, so to say, with the whole synth wave, retro wave thing. Many um, like underground artists, I guess you could say, start to release their stuff in like limited format on cassette tape, which is very cool. Yeah, and I also own like a lot of cassette tapes from my parents. They're also over there in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It seems that you and I are are similar because our our parents also were from Generation X, right? From the from the eighties, they grew up. They were teenagers in the eighties, and yeah. and they were exposed to all this technology, like records and and cassettes, and and we. Did you grow up on eighties music too? Eighties and nineties. Yeah, like my parents used to listen to that music all the time when we were like on trips to Poland or other countries. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I for me it was the same thing. I I only listened to uh, to mostly new wave artists from the eighties, yeah. like Cindy Lauper, uh, you know Howard Jones, uh, Pet Shop Boys, Tears for Fears, like all of the amazing people back in the eighties and in nineties. I would listen to like Euro Euro dance. I really liked yeah. Euro dance, like house music, techno music, and uh, that was what I grew up listening to, and uh, that's why. You know, people around me say, you know, how come you only you only <laughs> listen to to eighties music and you don't listen to anything else? You know, everybody else is listening to Miley Cyrus and and uh, Travis Scott and you know all those people. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays everybody is on SoundCloud. Like all those rappers, they're on SoundCloud. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> like the whole thing with the. I get popular on SoundCloud. I I I blow up. That's when nobody else in my family is gonna know me anymore. Yeah, that that whole sort of SoundCloud rapper thing. It's so funny to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I don't know if you noticed on my. I made a video. I think uh, I think two days ago. That's I was talking about 100 random facts about me, and I said that yeah. I I like to laugh at Chicago drill rap music because I think it's so it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Like yeah. I'm not I'm like I I feel sorry for the people that live in Chicago because <laughs> to be honest this in Chicago they are they're super ghetto because they live in like projects and, and you know in really yeah. de deplorable conditions but I feel like these artists are glamorizing that. You know, they're glamorizing yeah. that lifestyle. And it's not funny because I, I've known I have friends that live in Chicago and they say that if you go to those neighborhoods, you know, you have to be careful because they might, you know, they might pull a, you might hear gunshots, you might get killed. Yeah. So it's not funny. And all of those guys that are that are that are indie rappers, they're like like 
they, they just make me like laugh because of how stupid they are. But there, there, yeah. there are some rappers that that are very good, like uh, Deand Ward. Do, do you know who they are from South Africa? I don't think so. Like, I think I've heard of them once, but never again. But I'll check them out. Yeah, they were very popular a couple of years ago, probably like five years ago, when uh, when the actually it was ten years ago in twenty ten when they did the whole South Africa World Cup, the FIFA World Cup. They were very popular, um, and they even did a movie called Chappie, which is about a robot. So, have you ever seen that movie? Never. Never. You have to check it out, Chappie. It was yeah. from twenty fifteen, so it was. It's a really funny movie. And uh, they're not they're not terrible rappers. They're actually good. And so is Young Lean, this this indie rapper too. He's not a SoundCloud rapper. He's he's actually from I think Poland. Yeah, I think he's he's Polish or he's German, something like that. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta check him out too because he makes some pretty good stuff too. But not all hope is lost. But uh, I yeah. I just find most of these rappers you know ridiculous. You know, I I don't think it, it I I don't think it's funny at all. <laughs> Yeah, I got where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially with SoundCloud rappers, it's like they want to sound gangster and all. <laughs> and like, like you said, they try to play on the whole ghetto vibe and stuff, and it's really just <laughs> not good. Yeah, yeah, do you know that here in New York City, everybody wants to be a rapper? Like, you hear most of these high school yeah, students yeah. coming out and in my neighborhood. I want to become a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I want to blow up. <laughs> Like you see them with the, like like those uh those Tims like you know Timberlands like they're the, yeah, these kind of boots like Tims. yeah yeah that's a it's a really big thing here in New York because most 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 like Hispanics and like black people and also like white guys too like they like to wear those kind of things they like to look cool and stuff and <laughs> and I just love how stupid they are <laughs> yeah so rap is a is a really big thing here in New York City. Especially with yeah. with Cardi B coming out, she's also from here, from the Bronx. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm not into that stuff, you know. And and I'm glad that I found a similar person out there. You know, I'm not alone. You know, there are people out there yeah. like you that that like the same stuff as I do. So not a hope is lost. Yeah. And to my next question, I guess like, which is your most like? Of all time, most favorite album by her, like, ever, yeah. By Chisato, definitely, um, definitely this one. Iji Shiraku This one. Yeah, it's so nice, yeah. This My one. favorite track on that album is, like, track six. You have to listen to it. Oh, yeah, that one. I, I, I love that, that album. Uh, this was during her intergalactic space uh, outfit yeah. type of uh, you know phase in her life. This one actually went number one on the Oricon charts. I remember yeah. in an article they, you, they were talking about that. Uh -huh. Did you know that like in one of her PVs, like in like 1994 or 1993, I think she was like parodying Alien. Like she was walking around with a gun and all, and there was like an alien chasing her. It was really funny. Like if I find that video again, I'll send it to you. And that that's from that that album. Yeah. Oh. No, it's from another album, but yeah. Like. Oh wait, from wait, that... wait a second. I think I know which song that it's it's high high right? That was from 1993. Yeah, I think so. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know that that song, because I I do listen to her stuff from the 90s, like from later on. I do yeah. like uh, some of her songs from the 90s, like uh, after her her Idol days, after Warner yeah. Warner Pioneer, she did uh, a song called Watarese no Bashi. Watarese no Bashi. What was this? Rock and Roll Omelette. Rock and Roll Omelette. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's a really good song because she really loves the Beatles. That's what I've noticed. In yeah. her work she really loves the beatles and uh was yes snow again snow yeah. again i love that song and also giniru no yume and it's funny because she didn't perf she never performed this song chisato live but instead you know who performed for her cindy lopper cindy Ooh. lopper performed for her she sang the song giniru no yume on, on a true. japanese tv show and i thought i was like wow my idol you know, from my borough, from Queens, sang a Chisato song. That's that's <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. From, from 1996. 
and uh, so this is this this one is my favorite favorite album of hers because it was it went to number one of course on the Oricon charts, and because it has Junana Sai the there's two versions of Junana Sai, the first one is kind of like an intro version, and the last one is the Orange Mix, which is the the version that she sings on the live concert, right? Yeah. And uh, she has so many great songs here, especially Kondo Watashi Dokoka. That song. Yeah. Uh, and there's another idol from the 90s who sang the same exact song from Chisato. Her name is Kato Noriko. Kato Noriko. And uh, yeah. I love that version of the song as well. Uh, you, you could research it if you want to. And the, no, go ahead. What else was I going to say about Chisato from this particular album, 1989? Um, I, know, I love her fashion during this time. Uh, do you own any of her photo books? Oh, yeah, well, I'll show you. Yeah. I own E-Reality, one of her very late ones. Well, I'll show you one of the pages. Like, this is one from the 90s. Very cool one. Like, all the pages... Like on the um, last pages, it also like showcases some of her costumes from angles and stuff. Very nice one. Nice. I love right. how I love the military influence in her in her outfits and the Egyptian influences and everything. And yeah. it's it's really difficult to get those photo books because I've seen them auction online for like two hundred dollars. Where did you get? Yeah, these? like uh, this one. Um, I got it from eBay for like 30 euros. Was the last one though, and I think I know which one you mean for 200 euros. The one, the new season one, like her first photo book, very rare one. Yeah, but, I I have some of her photos, but they're like in online form. Like I have like a lot of photos of Chisato in a hard drive somewhere with a yeah. with some of the pictures from that photo book. But it would be nice to have it in 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 a physical copy, right, in the book. So, yeah. so I love uh, her fashion sense. Um, I I wonder. I often wonder if she wanted to become a fashion designer with all of her creativity that she had. I wonder. Perhaps, but I think her music career was the most important thing ever to her because, like, after the beauty contest, very shortly after she quit all the modeling stuff and put all her effort and. And let me think of another question really quickly. Um, yeah, what's your most favorite Western band like from the eighties, nineties, that sort of thing? Oh, man, uh, I have I have a lot of of great bands. Probably, uh, band band wise, hmm. I really do like the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah. The I really Pet like them as well. Yeah, they're they're a synth pop group. Uh, for 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 rock bands, for, for like new wave bands, definitely Blondie. I like I like Blondie a lot because they're also from New York City too, and they were like one of the first uh, punk bands and and new wave bands. So I, I like them too. Yeah. Hmm. So I don't think I can think of any more questions right now for some reason. Like, hmm. let me come up with one more question. Wait. Oh yeah. So since we're pretty much like born in different times, since I've actually been born in 2003, I'm pretty young. Yeah. 2003. So, wow. So you're like yeah, Generation Z. I'm technically like yeah. I'm technically like a millennial, but I'm like a late millennial to an early Generation Z. So I'm not sure. I'm just like smack down in the middle because I was born in 1994. So yeah. I am pretty old than than you, which is weird. Uh, I know most people <laughs> in your generation uh, really like 80s music for some reason, and and I see this resurgence yeah. in in 80s uh, culture, especially now with Stranger Things, and we have everybody. Uh, you know, bringing back the 80s, which is amazing, you know, because that's something yeah. that my generation didn't do, the millennials. I have a lot of beef with them because they're just, <laughs> you know, we're just not on the same level, you know. And, yeah. You know, they're just on a completely different level of things. And I find that yeah, people, I know how you feel. people in your generation like, are more, you know, mature and, and, yeah. and, you know, 
more uh, interested in these type of things, right? People in my generation are yeah. kind of like, I don't want to get into that. But uh, <laughs> any more questions? Yeah, or like during your time, like when you were like in high school, what was the most popular band? When I was in high school, Lady yeah. Gaga was the was at her peak, Lady Gaga. And definitely Justin Bieber and like emo bands like I don't know if you know any like emo bands like uh Paramore, you know, uh, all those crappy emo bands that I that I really hate. Um those were really popular back then when I was in high school. Nobody was really listening to 80s or anything. Everybody was just either into emo bands or they were into Justin <laughs> Bieber or Lady Gaga or, you know, rap like uh, you, um, Usher. I don't know. That's what they were listening to back then. And I was like the only person that was listening to like 80s J-pop, you know, J-rock. Um, I was pretty much listening to the same music that I'm listening to right now. And rock. I was very much into rock, so that kind of defined my identity. Uh, I'm pretty much of uh, probably 90%, not 90%, probably like 80% rock I am. And the rest is pop, the rest is hip-hop, rap, and dance music. That's, yeah, yeah I'm a very rock person. <laughs> Which is weird because uh, I'm Hispanic and, and people assume that, that I only listen to Hispanic music and not... No. Not at all. I listen to rock music. Like over here, we have like stereotypical problems as well. Like since I'm half Polish, people say that I steal a lot, which I don't. <laughs> that's, that's that's funny. I do yeah. have a lot of Polish friends that I knew like in like in high school, and uh, and they're really they're really cool people. I like Polish people. Yeah, they're very kind, and welcoming, and embracing. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have any other questions? No, sadly not. <laughs> no? Man, I, no. I feel like a grandma compared to you. And I feel like your <laughs> generation is like, like millions of years away. Like, you guys are like out of this earth. Like, I feel like people in my generation are just, you know, oh my God, they're such a, they're so difficult, you know? Yeah, I know I, what I'm, you mean. I'm glad that your generation is actually doing something. You know, you guys are progressing in life. You guys, I know, you know, it's really depressing, you know, especially like in modern times, like especially in America nowadays with the whole, like everybody hates, you know, the president, Donald Trump. Uh, and the economy is really bad here. And, you know, there are little to no jobs for, for our youth. And, uh, and things are just really, really, really bad here, the situation here. And... Uh, and it's nice to know that that your generation is wants to progress in life. They want to move forward. They want to, you know, change things. And and I'm glad that you know there are people like you out there, you know, enlightened human beings, you know, that that want to make a difference <laughs> in the world. I'm glad yeah. because with my generation, I've just been like let down. I've been disappointed. I've been, you know, hurt, betrayed. You know, I have so many bad experiences with people in my generation. And uh, I don't even bother with them anymore. They're just like a lost cause, you know. And I speak with you guys, with people in your generation, even my cousins yeah. who are who are your age as well. You know, they're on a completely different level. And I'm, you know, I, I'm I'm happy to to see that that faith has been restored in humanity. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad. Like I think, in every generation, there's like black sheep, people who weren't raised right if you know what i mean like spoiled or anything but yeah you're mostly right like i would say my generation is pretty okay yeah yeah they're pretty conservative you know they're uh they're they're more open-minded and more mature and like i said I, i'm 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 happy to to find people that are that we're on the same level like mentally you know we like the same stuff and uh, and that there there's hope, you know, in the world. Because you know, when I was in when I was in high school, you know, uh, I'm not. I don't want to get too personal here, but uh, it was just a really bad bad time in my life, you know. Um, I was a I was a, I was really you know socially awkward. I still am kind of socially awkward, but not not to the point anymore because I'm a lot older and mature. But uh, 
it really was a really really bleak time for me and i'm glad that that maybe teens and teenagers in your generation are more more mature you know yeah and uh more open-minded more logical and i like that you know yeah and uh so, and, and i'm glad our love for chisato joined us together in this chat yeah it's very it's been very nice meeting you so far mm -hmm. yeah and do your other friends also like your internet friends are they from the u.s like like myself mm, i think one of them is from the u.s but like mostly for example mystical composers from europe oh yeah jd emedic 23 is from america yeah but mostly they're from either Europe or Asia, yeah. Nice, nice. And 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 uh, do you talk about uh, about the same topics with them, like Chisato, and yeah. or do you talk about yeah. like politics or religion? <laughs> no, right? No, we mostly talk about like music because I think, for example, politics is a topic that you should con like. How do you how do you say it again in English? Something you shouldn't talk about with your friends with a lot because it sparks up diversity and like rivalry in between your friends. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I have a lot of friends that have different political beliefs, but I never let that come between us. You know. Yeah. Uh, I never, you know, they can express so much dissent for the current economic situation or whatever, but I, ne I never let that come between us. You know, we're always going to be friends. You know. Despite our differences in pol politics, or whatever, I'm not going to let that destroy our friendship. You know, and a lot of people yeah. take it too personally, especially nowadays, that the, yeah, the situation here in America is horrible, and yeah. uh, and people are are you know, like, there's a lot of hate nowadays. Yeah. There, there's just a lot of uh, you know chaos nowadays, and yeah. I don't know if it's going to get any better. So I'm, I'm well, just glad that that people have to be divided, you know, uh, on one on one common one common goal, which is freedom, you know, happiness, and the right for everybody to live the way that they want to live, right? I think that yeah. that's that's the way things have to be, instead of letting politics and, and you know, other stupid things divide us, right? Yeah. Like, uh -huh. a lot of people nowadays, especially, like, from my generation, like you said, politics really divide people nowadays for example in germany we have a very very common leftist party cdu which is like a christian party very very leftist and then we have um, a very rightist party the npd npd basically you have northern germany you have southern germany people from southern germany like the See the CDU more, I'd like people from Northern Germany like the NPD more, and there's pretty much rivalry between two sides of the country, which really sucks, but you can't do anything about it because when you try to argue with these people, they try to make up lies or they try to like idolize their people, if you know what I mean. Yes. Like it's so, yeah. It's the same thing here in America. We have the Republicans and the Democrats, and they're constantly, you know, throwing hate at each other, saying, I'm better than you, and whatever. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing here. It's And everybody hates the president. And uh, next year are the elections, and, and people, especially the Democrats, they want uh, Donald Trump, who's a Republican, to, like, they want to destroy him. And, and you know what? I'm not going to vote next year. I'll be honest with you. I'm not voting next year. Because the way, yeah. because things haven't haven't been progressing in in America, you know, with with Obama nor with uh, Trump. So it's like, you know, nothing's ever gonna get better here. And we wonder, yeah. you know, I'm I'm worried about my future, you know. And that's the most important thing is to worry about the future. What's gonna happen to everybody, you know? And people have to stop fighting, you know. Yeah. And arguing with each other, and I'm just tired of everything, you know. In, in America, yeah. you know. Like in Europe, we have many problems as well. Being like, I guess, a huge super nation, mm -hmm. you have to be very politically correct over here. For example, we have people from all sorts of races. I think it's the same in America. But like here we like accept refugees and stuff from like 
countries that are in war, for example, Afghanistan and stuff, and like, if you're not super politically correct, people consider you a racist for some reason. Yeah, and yeah. here it's the same thing. They think everything is racist. They think everything, you know, I remember years yeah. ago, you could have your opinion and you could walk away, you know, no harm done to you. But nowadays, yeah. if you say one thing, one thing online or on the street, you're going to get killed. You're going to get mugged. You're yeah. going to get threatened. And people are crazy here in New York City as well. Everybody here is like pretty much mentally ill. And that's yeah, why, like, you know. Like I, I heard in the yeah. <laughs> Should I go ahead or you? You go ahead. Okay. So basically in America, like I hear and like read about America a lot, for example. In America, I think right now, if you're white, you're instantly considered a racist just for your color of skin, which is weird. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. You're, you're automatically considered a racist. And if you don't agree with, uh, if you agree with Donald Trump, you're a racist. If you don't agree no. with Donald Trump, you're, uh, you're, you know, a hero. Or if you, if you are apolitical like myself, you are, uh, you know, you're a reject or you're just a, you're a horrible person. Or, you know, it's just, oh my God, it's ridiculous. It really, it is ridiculous yeah. here. But I'm, I'm, uh, I guess the situation in Europe's not any better, right? It's the same as here. So I yeah. guess it's sort of like a global, you know, problem, you know, this whole economy thing. Mm -hmm. I guess it started after 9-11. Uh, I guess that was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Yeah. I, I felt it. Everybody felt it here in New York City and in America. That was the event that that forced us to go to come here. And I and I feel like my youth was like my teen my my teenage years were robbed because during that time there was like an economic recession. That was the start of the economic recession. And things have been going downhill ever since. So I feel like my youth was robbed. A lot of people uh, I know who are my friends feel the same thing that they never accomplished anything. That you know. It's just really, really depressing times, you know, and it's hard to find, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. Yeah. Because everybody my age is pretty much, you know, they're old, they're like in their late 20s, you know, they're out of college, they're, they're unemployed, you know, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. And, and I feel like, like years ago, people were more optimistic, there were more jobs, there was more, you know, you had more independence to do whatever you want, and now everybody's stuck yeah. with their parents. And <laughs> different times now. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you don't have any more questions for me? Sadly not, but I think this was a great Q and A style situation, so yeah. to say. Yeah, it's very interesting to 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 converse with someone all the way from Germany because I've never had a German internet friend before. Really? I've had other friends from like Italy or from Canada. I have a lot of Canadian friends and a lot of like like Mexican people that are my buddies as well because I'm I have a Mexican descent too. So I have a lot of uh, interesting friends from around around the world and you're my first uh German friend. So that, that that's nice. Yeah, well, I'm happy about that as well. Yes. Like I think the problem with Germans and English is most Germans have a very, very thick German accent. For example, they pronounce the Z, like it's so weird. And I think that discourages them from like going online, talking with people and all that. So, yeah. yeah. And I don't, I don't believe in the, you know, the stereotypes with the whole yeah. Hitler. Like when people think of Germany, they think of Hitler. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, that, like most American people that are like uh, leftist, say that all Germans are evil and Nazis, which I totally disagree with that because I've heard so many stories about World War II, especially from my grandma, my now dead grandpa, and I've been like in in hate with Hitler pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like the whole fascist regime thing, it's all been a very bad time and like when the DDR or the GDR, how they call it in America, was a thing like the communist regime. Everything was very bad. It's, it's very nice to converse with people around the world to hear their, you know, their just to see how life is over there, and like in Germany, because I'm I'm curious, yeah. you know, I've I've uh, there's a lot of Jewish, like I live in a in a neighborhood that's full of a lot of Jewish people that had like families that came from Germany, like from the war, like they came here after the war. 
So they, they have like a lot of stories about the war and everything. That, but that's what the only thing people talk about yeah. is in Germany is World War II and about Hitler. But I know that you guys have progressed in life. You know, you're not like that anymore. Right? Yeah. You've moved on from that after the Berlin Wall fell, 1989. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and things, like, are, things are different now. Yeah, maybe we should have like a separate video as well where we talk about like, I guess, the history of Germany and maybe the history of America. I don't know. Maybe we should yeah, do that I, as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be a great a great topic to talk about because I, I love American history. Actually, when I was in school, I got a lot of awards for... Uh, for uh, American history, because I was very good at that. I was yeah. I, I got like really high grades in American <laughs> history because I I just love American history and some of the American history is very controversial, and and uh, sometimes the the textbooks lie to you because yeah they they don't like to tell you the truth. The truth is really harsh. You know American history is yeah. so so controversial. And there's always going to be different viewpoints. There's always going to be different perspectives. And sometimes people like to alter the truth. And uh, but I like to discover things on my own. Like whenever they would assign me stuff to do on a textbook, I would read the entire textbook. And then I would go online and I would figure out the, the real story, the real history. So I'm like that, you know. I just don't trust what they tell me on the books. I, I research more and more. Yeah. So I think this was very cool to do, yeah. And we should do it again, like about the history stuff. And yeah. yeah. It was very, very nice talking to you. Yeah, it was very nice talking to you, Jan. Yeah. And thanks thank for this awesome con yeah, thanks for this awesome conversation, Jess. Yeah, you can call me <laughs> so Jess. <excited> for it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I'll give I'll give you a high five. High five. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So, see you around. I'll have to go now, do some other things. Yeah, so I'll see you around Bye. and we'll talk yeah. about uh, another video topic later on. So, yeah, see you. Uh, I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.